of the main carrots that the political parties are trying to use to reel us in at this general election is cutting taxes but also investing more in things like the NHS, public services. The thing is that tax was how those things used to be paid. You would pay your taxes and it would be put into things like the NHS, public facilities, libraries, all that sort of stuff. And you also paid your council tax for other things like also libraries, like your emergency services, like your um, rubbish collections, things like that. And of course we know that a lot of council funding has been withdrawn by the government so the council tax has had to go up because we're now paying some of that where the government used to top up the council funding. But I was also reading an article yesterday about how one of the Tories promises if it gets voted in again which of course won't happen um, so I think that this is kind of a, a moot point really because this isn't going to happen and even if they do get in this still won't happen is they're talking about abolishing cutting back and there's also been talk about abolishing national insurance for self-employed people now primarily the national insurance pays for your state pension which I mean who knows I mean I retire in more than 20 years 20 years maybe 20 years I don't know what it is anymore it's too long a way to worry about and maybe the state pension won't exist at all then maybe it will exist in a way that makes it largely inaccessible and by that I mean if they keep raising the state pension age less people will reach that age so less state pension gets paid out and I guess that is one a tactic they can use to deal with the problem of too many retired people and not enough working people putting back into that system with paying national insurance because now we have loads and loads of retired people who have the state pension and no new people or not enough new people working paying into that system you can think of the state pension as being a little bit like a Ponzi scheme it takes the next generation of investors to pay for the people who now need it and of course we now have a problem with that so you can see the tactics that are being used to try and prevent people from getting the state pension without saying we're getting rid of the state pension and if you simply raise the age that that you get the state pension at you've got a better chance of people dying before they reach it and therefore you have less people to pay the state pension to now this other tactic is the one that kind of interests me which is abolishing national insurance for certain people so they don't have to pay it or making it voluntary now they tried this before I can't remember how long ago not that many years ago where for the lowest self-employed people they made the contribution of national insurance voluntary and what they found that happened was that they all stopped paying the national insurance because that money was better put back into the business or paying rent or business rates or whatever else it was paying for. And so they instantly realised that they had a bit of a problem, which was that none of these self-employed people were investing in their state pension. And of course, as we know, many, many self-employed people do not have any sort of pension provision or retirement provision at all because we just don't earn enough to put anything in and so they reversed that new system and put the national insurance back in so you still had to pay it because people weren't paying and they realized that at some point you're going to have a massive implosion of people getting to a certain age to retire and having no retirement. You're going to have a whole generation 
of retirees who are basically starving to death and dying in their own homes because they can't afford to put their heating on. That, I think, is probably still going to happen. Um, but what they're doing now is talking about abolishing that national insurance for the lowest self-employed earners and then tiering it as it gets as you get to higher earnings so there are class two and class four i think for self-employed people and i think in the mid range of incomes you can pay i think it's uh not have to pay both and when you get to the higher tier you'd have to pay more because you had more income but what it means again is that if they got in, this probably won't happen, but it doesn't stop anyone else trying it, that those lowest income earners in the self-employed bracket are now no longer contributing to the state pension. Now, you might say, well, the onus will be on them to set up private pensions or other retirement options, but we know that people don't do that. So again, you have this problem of they won't have put enough years into their national insurance to get state pension if they're allowed to do it voluntarily and they don't. So again, you have this problem of you're just going to have a load of people who just won't be eligible for the state pension or will get a much smaller state pension because they haven't contributed. Now, if you have contributed enough, then say for me I have to contribute seven more years to get my full 35 year uh, number of years to get the full state pension so after that seven years where I probably still have quite a few years of employment left to go because I'm not planning on retiring at the state pension age anyway I could I can just stop paying the national insurance because I've got my full quota, there's no point in me paying any more. I could also say, right, I'm going to take what would have been my national insurance every year and add that into either my pension pot or my stocks and shares ISA and top, top it up for additional retirement funding because the state pension obviously isn't going to be enough to live on and the two funds that I've set up aren't going to be enough to live on they will only be enough to top up the state pension, which I think will be okay. It looks like it, you know, from where I am now, it will be enough. What inflation and prices and whatever look like in 20 odd years, I have no idea. But my, my idea was to um, take out an annuity on the pension that I had saved. So just take out a small chunk every year and let the investment keep on growing what was left and the same for the ISA just take out a nominated amount each year which of course is untaxable so that tax free so that means that I'm not paying as much back because of course state pension is taxable if you go over your personal allowance every year through having the state pension and plus maybe any other earnings you have or any other retirement funds you have they ta they'll tax you so you need to keep as close to that limit as possible but of course the personal allowance is not a lot of money, certainly not at the moment, it's not enough to live on. But there again, if you are working and if I carried on being self-employed after the age at which I can get the state pension, it might be that my expenses connected to my self-employment would do what they do now, which is bring me underneath that taxable limit. So at the moment, like this year, uh, I've just completed my self-assessment, my total Everything in self-assessment is much better than last year. It would take me into a taxable bracket. However, some of it is untaxable benefits. Um, and there are other expenses that I claim back through my business, which means that I've dropped back under that tax radar. So I, I kind of look at the this, again, this self-employed, let's scrap the national insurance for the lowest self-employed as another way of getting out of paying state pensions. But then of course they have to think about how are they going to make people invest in their own retirement. Now I know that they made workplace pensions compulsory. You have to request to opt out of them and most people will use them. And I know that there was talk about setting up self-employed pensions which you would opt 
I think you would have to opt out of rather than into to make people plan for that retirement that they won't get through the state pension. But I haven't heard anything about that for a while. And bearing in mind that most of the political parties are not interested in poor people, they're not interested in people who have no investable income. Um, I think the hope is that, that you know, nature will naturally work itself out and we'll just all starve to death before we hit retirement and then they won't have to deal with us. And of course, when you're dealing with politics, uh, political parties only look towards the end of their term. They're not interested in the long term future. So any changes that are made aren't going to mean anything by the time people like me retire because we'll have changed government so many times. So it doesn't really matter. So it's a bit of a non-subject really because we know they're not going to get in again. There's a reasonable chance that these things will not come in through another party. But I just thought it was an interesting discussion point because I know that when I talk about uh, there not being a state pension by the time I retire, people get very annoyed and say not, they'll never get rid of the state pension. Well, theoretically, they won't get rid of the state pension. They'll just make it harder for you to get it. And if they just keep raising the state pension age... Um, which is much more likely, then that will just remove a whole bunch of people because as as generationally we go on, we are also getting sicker and sicker. We're not living as long. We are not um, functioning productively as long. So people who are getting sick before they even retire and then spend their entire retirement being ill and unable to do anything else. Um, so you don't have people on on the state pension who have nothing else but are also working to top it up because they're too sick to. So there's this enormous bottleneck coming which, uh, I don't know, I, I guess they're hoping that nature will work itself out naturally, which is, <sighs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, like I said, it's a moot point. It's a long time away. Who knows what will happen? Maybe none of us will be here by the time it gets there. Uh, but I just thought it was an interesting subject. I do find it really interesting that when you look at the way they talk about national insurance and, and you know, um, tax and things like that, that if you, th you just have to think about... It's like they're all promising... They're all promising to up the number of... Like, upping the number of teachers, um, increasing investment in the NHS improving public funding, uh, improving social housing, getting more money into it. But at the same time, they talk about reducing taxes for everybody. And given the amount of debt the country has, I don't quite know where that money's coming from. I don't think anyone really does. So I, th I think that the, the, vo the voting for this general election will come down entirely to your stance on immigration. Um, and that is why people like Farage and Reform may stand a better chance of getting in. Because I think people's knee-jerk reaction is, one, just to get the Tories out. So they'll vote for whoever will get the Tories out. And two, stopping immigration. We, but you need to look at the other policies that those parties, that those parties are bringing in. It's not just about, right, we're going to stop votes. Because look at all the other things that they're also saying. Um, there are all sorts of interesting conversations going on out there at the moment and I generally keep out of politics it's exhausting me getting involved in the argument doesn't change anything it doesn't help anything but I, the whole national insurance thing particularly for the self-employed because that affects me is just an intriguing little little side thought and I'm sure that plenty of you will have things to say on that so that's why I thought I'd throw this in as an extra extra subject matter because we like a bit of that on YouTube don't we so thank you for watching um, I know that plenty of comments will end up getting thrown into my my blocked words folder and things like that and I will go through them and filter out the ones that aren't highly offensive racist uh, derogatory or full of swearing <laughs> because uh, 
<laughs> a few of them are like that but uh, I do like the open conversation it's really interesting to hear other people's perspectives and I'm always willing to be swayed by a good argument so do drop your comments and I'll speak to you again soon bye bye